This video is going to introduce us to a few common classes of graphs. So there are some types of graphs that come up quite frequently, um, and the first one that we're going to talk about is paths. So we already know what a path is within a larger graph, um, and it turns out that if the entire graph is just a path, then there's a specific name for that, and they are labeled by this capital P with a subscript. So P1, the number on this, uh, on P refers to the number of vertices. So a path on one vertex, of course, is just a single vertex. A path on two vertices, right, two vertices connected with a line. A path on three vertices. And then I'm going to draw a few different paths on four vertices. Uh, so one way to think about it would be like this, right? You can start at this vertex and go to this vertex. But also, I haven't mentioned this explicitly yet, but um, it doesn't really actually matter uh, the, sh the arrangement of the vertices here. So this graph, P4, is the same as this graph, P4. Um, so you can sort of move these pictures around and they're really the same thing. All we care about in a graph is the vertices and then the relationship between the vertices, meaning the edges that connect them. So here you've just got one, two, three, four vertices, and they're just connected in this string of edges that goes that travels through all of them. And here you have one, two, three vertices that is again connected in a single string, um, so to speak. Uh, and there's nothing that says you can't sort of have these sort of off kilter, so like maybe the path in this one looks like this and that's the same. Okay, so these are the paths, and of course you can go up to as many vertices as you want. Um, the next one we're going to talk about is cycles. So again, we already talked about what a cycle is within the context of a larger graph, um, but it turns out that the graph can be entirely made up of a cycle, and so that's denoted with a C and then a subscript, and here again the subscript refers to the number of vertices. So a cycle with one vertex is just going to be a loop right because it's supposed to start and begin uh, begin and end at the same vertex and then a cycle on two vertices will just be a set of parallel ed parallel edges a cycle on three vertices will just look like a triangle right and a cycle on four vertices will just look like a square and then here again I've left a few copies blank so that we can see um, that the cycles can look a little bit different depending on how you choose to draw them, and they'll still be the same graph C5. So of course the, the next one, like the graphs we have above, would look like this, right, the pentagon. But you could also have a five cycle that goes from this vertex to this one, to this one, to this one, to this one, right, and it looks like a star. And you might not know immediately upon seeing this graph that it was a cycle, but it is. Um, so essentially you could rearrange the vertices to make it look like this graph on the left which means that the underlying graphs here, these two are basically the same thing. Um, and similarly, you know, maybe you have one, two, three, four, five, maybe this, right? This is also a five cycle, so it's a cycle on five vertices. So the point of this is to introduce these classes of graphs and also to introduce you to the notion that just because the pictures don't look the same doesn't mean the graphs aren't the same. These two are, in fact, all three of these are, in fact, the same graph, but even though they look very different. So again, all we care about is the vertices, the number of vertices, and then the relationship between the vertices. Um, so let's just try labeling these vertices to sort of maybe get a clearer picture of what we mean. So this is A, B, C, D, E. And if we want this to be the exact same graph, then the the labels need to make sense, right? Okay, so if this is A, we know that A is supposed to go to B, and it's also supposed to be um, adjacent to E, right, or incident to E. So A's neighbors are B and E, and then B's neighbors are A and C, right? B's neighbors are A and C. C's neighbors are B and D, right? D's neighbors are C and E, right? And D's neighbors here are C and E, and E's neighbors are A and D. Same thing over here. So these are in fact the same graph, even though the pictures look a little bit different. Okay, so the next class of graphs we want to talk about are the complete graphs. And a complete graph means that every single possible edge between the vertices exists. So 
you don't want to create multiple edges or parallel edges, and you don't want to just throw in loops, but if you can connect two distinct vertices, then you should. Okay, so once again, the number here represents the number of vertices, so a complete graph, and these are denoted with a K, a complete graph on one vertex doesn't have any edges, because we don't want loops or parallel edges. A complete graph on two vertices, right? How many edges can you put here? Well, just the one. You connect them, because you don't want to make a parallel edge or a loop. The complete graph on three vertices, the complete graph on four vertices, and here's the complete graph on five vertices. Note that every vertex in each of these graphs, every vertex should be adjacent to every other vertex. So if you consider looking at, say, K3, every one of these vertex vertices should have degree 2, right? So there are three total vertex vertices, which means that this vertex should be adjacent to the other two. So it should have degree 2, this should have degree 2, this should have degree 2. Uh, and the same thing holds true in general, right? So over here, the graph has four vertices, and every vertex should be adjacent to the other three. So this should have degree three, this should have degree three, this should have degree three, and this should have degree three, and they do. Similarly with K5, they should all have degree four, and they do. So every graph, um, every complete graph, the vertices all have um, the same number of edges uh, incident to them. They have the same degree. Now, let's think for a second about how many edges there are in a complete graph. Okay, so a complete graph, let's say we're dealing with Kn, the complete graph on n vertices. Well, how many edges is that graph going to have? Okay, so let's just think for a second. K2 has one edge, and K3 has three edges, and K4 has six edges, and K5 has, it turns out, so if you count them around the outside, one, two, three, four, five, and then around the inside, one, two, three, four, five. So it has 10. And what's happening here, if you want to think about it this way, is that between any two vertices in a complete graph, there should be an edge. So if you think about, um, the number of edges in a complete graph, it should have something to do with n choose 2. Okay, because you have n vertices and choose any two of them and there should be an edge between them. So let's just have a quick reminder about what n choose 2 means. Okay, so n choose 2 is a combinatorial expression, and the definition of this is n factorial over 2 factorial times n minus 2 factorial. So remember, factorial just means to multiply them. Um, so like 5 factorial would be 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So let's just check with k5 and see if we're getting the, the correct number of edges here. So for K5, we have 5 choose 2. So that should be 5 factorial over 2 factorial times 3 factorial. So this should be 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 divided by 2 times 1 times 3 times 2 times 1. And what happens here, you can see 3's will cancel, 2's will cancel, these 1's will cancel, and you end up with 20 divided by 2, or 10, which is the correct number of edges for K5. So it makes sense if you think about what's actually happening and why this should be the answer, right? Again, because you have n vertices, and choose any two, you want to have the edge connecting them. So how many ways can you choose any two vertices from among n, n choose 2 is precisely what will calculate that. So this is complete graphs. The next thing I want to mention is bipartite graphs. Okay, so bipartite graphs are a little bit harder to distinguish from some of the other ones um, on first glance. Bipartite, so bi meaning two, uh, and partite standing for, I think, a partition. Essentially, you're trying to divide the vertices into two different sets and within one set, they're not allowed um, to have any edges within that set. So for example, uh, if you look at this vertex and this vertex, and then this 
and this and this. Here are two vertex sets, the ones in black and then the ones in red. And for a bipartite graph, you want to be able to find two different sets like this, say red and black, where there are no edges between any of the black vertices. So here you can see there are two vertices and there's no edge between them. And here there are three red vertices and no edges between them. And then we don't really care what happens between the red and the black. There are allowed to be any sort of edges between them um, and it doesn't really matter. But we don't want any edges going from a black vertex to a black vertex or from a red vertex to a red vertex. So if I have that nicely divided here in terms of left and right, but this next graph here is also an example of a bipartite graph. So you can think about, so this and this and this, and then as our other set, um, well, let me just use this color that I've got. We can have this one and this one and this one. Right, so again, you can see, right, this black circled vertex, only its only neighbors are red circled vertices. And this red circled vertex, its only neighbors are the black circled vertices, etc. So this is what describes a bipartite graph. So we'll go ahead and do it for this one as well. So this will get one color, right, and then those two can't have that color. And then this one will get the first color, and then this one can't have that color. And so again, when we go back and choose um, our second color, Right, you can put this one and this one and this one all in the second set. So these are all examples of bipartite graphs. And it turns out that there's a really nice characterization of when a graph is bipartite. And it turns out that a graph of size at least one, meaning there's at least one edge in the graph, is bipartite if and only if. So if and only if means necessary and sufficient conditions, right? <clears throat> if and only if. There is no cycle of odd length. In the graph. <clears throat> so this is actually a very nice characterization. So if you come up and look at these bipartite graphs we've got here, so this one doesn't have any cycles. Um, so let's look at this one. So how many cycles are in this? Well, there's this four cycle, and then there's another four cycle, right? Four, um, four edges and four vertices in the cycle. So there's sort of the two halves. And then there's the cycle around the outside, right? The sixth cycle. So four, four, and six. Um, it, it, so it turns out if you had had, a, say, a triangle in your graph, there's no way for that to be bipartite. Or if you had a cycle of size 7, there's no way for that to be bipartite. And the reason is, I mean, if you think about, say, let's consider a cycle of size 5, and just begin at any one of your vertices. Okay, so let's create our cycle here. And begin at any one of your vertices. Okay, so let's label this one red. Okay, well then that means this can't be red and this can't be red. So we want to make this one red, okay, <clears throat> and sim similarly, let's, uh, let's choose our second color and do a similar idea. Okay, well, this one can't be red, but you can make this one blue, right, and you can make this one blue. So your colors have to alternate, right, blue, red, blue, red, and you're only allowed two different sets. Remember, it's bipartite, only two sets. So now if you have an odd cycle like this, they're supposed to alternate around, and then what are you going to put this one in, right? It can't go in blue, it has a blue neighbor, it can't go in red, it has a red neighbor. And so it turns out that's both necessary and sufficient. So as long as you don't have an odd cycle, your graph will be bipartite, which is really nice. And then the last thing I want to talk about um, in this video is the idea of a complete bipartite graph. And so a complete bipartite graph is a combination sort of of what we've talked about before, a complete graph and a bipartite graph. So K for complete, just like the ones above, except for now, we're essentially going to have our two sets. So here this one and two indicate that one of the sets of vertices has a single vertex, and one of the sets of vertices has two vertices. And then between those sets, every possible edge exists. Now remember though, for bipartite, 
um, you don't want edges between the sets. So for example, uh, if this is one set and then this is the other two, that these are the two that belong in this set, we don't want edges between these two vertices, but every other edge we do want. Similarly, if you come over here, right, so I've got them sort of <clears throat> partitioned out. So there are these circled vertices and then the non-circled vertices, and you don't want any edges between the circled vertices, and you don't want any edges between the non-circled vertices because you want it to be bipartite, but every possible edge that you can put between circled and non-circled, you should put. So for this one should go to both of these, and this one should go to both of these. So here I've left this one for us to fill in the blanks, and in general if you want to create a complete bipartite graph, so K23, you put your two vertices here, and you put your, two, your three vertices on the other side, or however many you have in, the, in your sets, and then you just want to start at one vertex, right, and draw in all the edges from this vertex to the other set, and then move to the next, and draw in all the edges from this vertex to the other set. So this is K23. And I've drawn another one here just for you to get an idea of <clears throat> what these things look like. They can get pretty busy pretty quickly, but again, if you want, say, the complete bipartite graph on sets of size 3 and 4, you put your three vertices on the left, you put your four vertices on the right, and then you go about connecting all the possible edges between them. So those are complete bipartite graphs. And so this has been an introduction to some common classes of graphs.